How's everybody? Good? It's cool today. It's nice. I like when my hands are cold. <laughs> okay, so these are the announcements. I just want to say if you are not on our mailing list already, please go to our website, calvarychapelwestchester.org, and then there's a thing that says updates, I think. You click on that. It says sign up for email. You put in your first name, your last name, and your email address, and you'll automatically be added. And then all of the announcements that we announce, plus the ones we forget to announce that I send out in emails, you'll have. So um, <clears throat> the Harvest Festival is October 26th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, everything is getting underway. Irene's making a few things for games. I ordered so many supplies for the stuff. We'll have another meeting soon um, just to, or we'll send out an email to the people who are volunteering. And it's not too late if you want to join us and volunteer to help set up, break down. Um, you don't have to do both. If you can only come Friday night to help us set up, then that's great. If you can come at the end of the day on Saturday to clean up, that's great too. Um, so, um, but if regardless of your if you're coming or not um, there's some beautiful flyers that were made and they're in the back here and there's some out by the offering box please take a flyer if you have an office a, um, a place you can hang it um, if you know anybody wants to volunteer to go to the supermarket because I said I'm gonna do that this week but if you're going today take one and put it up for us invite your friends with children it's gonna be great um, the kids leave with a little bag filled with all kinds of candies and some tracks and we hope to introduce some of them to Jesus. You know, some of them are being raised in Christian homes and some of them are not. And they'll come out and they'll learn about the love of God and that he loves them. So please tell your friends, in, you know, get as many people to know about this event as you can. Midweek Bible study is Wednesday. We're in Second Chronicles. Doors um, open at 630. And the Bible study is from 7 to 8. If you live too far or you're on the train, you're on your way home from work at that hour and you can't make it, um, you can join us on Facebook Live. Um, and just so everybody knows, the Facebook Live goes live when the pastor starts speaking, not for worship. We don't have a license to broadcast worship, so um, that's why we don't broadcast worship. So um, <clears throat> if you go on at 10 o'clock, you're like, oh, it's not on. I guess they're not. It's because it goes on after worship. So just keep that in mind. Um, Operation Christmas Child, the collection is going to be November 17th. I put the boxes out today. There are some flyers there. Um, so if you're doing a boy and a girl, then you just need one flyer because there's a boy and a girl sticker on it. I made a few copies. I'm waiting for them. I ordered 100. They haven't come yet. So maybe they'll be in our P.O. box this week, and then we'll have more. But you can take the box and start filling them up. And on the um, flyer is the instructions on... Uh, what to do. Yeah, you can print them on the website, but if you're, if you're impatient, print them. If you can be patient, they should be here by next week. Um, so, but what else was I going to tell you? Oh, there's lots of fun stuff on the website. There's a, a way to track your box. So if you want to learn more about Operation Christmas Child, go on um, and read up about it. It's a wonderful organization. Um, Samaritan's Purse, they do a lot of different things for crisis, you know, if there's a hurricane or any kind of natural disaster, they're the ones that go in and minister to people and give them the gospel. And this Operation Christmas Child, it's an international program, but it's also domestic. They do give boxes in very poor communities in the United States of America as well. So um, it's just a great way to bring a smile to a kid's face, show the love of Jesus, and um, give hope to a family that's hurting. <clears throat> And I just want to say that many years ago when we first started this, my sister-in-law wrote a letter with her kids in her box and it was sent out. And months and months and months later, she got a letter back from a little boy in Honduras whose house was destroyed in a mudslide. And that was the only thing he owned was what was in that box. So if you're like, oh, what's the big deal? It's a big deal. Make a box if you can. You'll feel good about it. And you pray over that box and only God knows what's going to happen with it when it reaches its destination. Uh, nursing home visit is next week. Prayer meeting is this Tuesday. So if anybody's interested in coming out to pray with us, like I said last time, if you don't feel comfortable praying out loud, you can still come and just sit and be in agreement and um, hear the prayers that we offer up for the church. It's a great time. 
um, to bring your concerns to the Lord, but to pray for your brothers and sisters in this church, other churches, and abroad. So please consider joining us, um, 7 p.m. Uh, the missions trip, obviously, everybody's been hearing a lot about that. It's not too late, but if you plan on going, we recommend you get your tickets ASAP because they get more and more expensive as the time gets closer. So July 5th through July 15th is the trip. And speaking of Cambodia, next Friday, the 18th, is that next Friday? No, not this Friday coming, the, the following, on the 18th, uh, we will be picking Holly up at the airport with Chenda and um, Narin. So praise the Lord. Um, so yes, you know, uh, we're excited. They're going to be speaking here on Sunday. Please try to be here that day. Invite your friends. I'm sure people are going to be blessed. And to meet this young woman who's been through so much and to see the joy of the Lord on a girl's face who's been through the tragedies that she has experienced. And Narin also, her family, uh, her parents came through the Khmer Rouge. So these are people who grew up very poor and in uh, very difficult situations. And they have the joy of the Lord. And it's amazing. So if you're here and you're like, I know Jesus, but I don't have the joy, you might catch it from them if you come, because <laughs> they really are amazing. Um, so Knits and Knots is that day, the 18th. Please sign up if you're coming. If nobody signs up today, we're going to cancel, because Youth Night has to be canceled because Charlie's picking up Holly. So, um, so there's no Youth Night that night, but Knits and Knots, I'll be here, but only if people are coming. So if anybody wants to come that day, great. If not, we'll see you in December. Um, meal train, everybody knows about that, but there's two, there's three other things I want to tell you about. One is there's a women's conference coming up uh, October 9th, um, 19th, yeah, Saturday. Um, it's Calvary Chapel of Grace and Truth in Yonkers. They've invited us. They have um, three speakers. You can find all the information online. It's from eight to four. Um, <clears throat> it's $35 a person. You have to register. Um, to go and there's a cutoff of 120 people so I don't know if they're full yet I guess you'll find out when you go online and try to register but I would recommend you go I go every year sometimes I speak there but this year Holly's here and I will not be able to go because we're doing something with the girls that day but I encourage you ladies to go if you can and there's a marriage um, conference it's one day it's next Saturday from uh, 8 a.m. doors open and the conference is from 9 to 4.30. It's $35 a person if you register online, $40 at the door. However, there's 150 people minimum. So if you get there and you're 151, you're not going. So if you really want to go, sign up online so you can guarantee your spot. And uh, the marriage one and the women's one are open to anyone 16 years and older. So if you're a young man, a young woman, you're not married today, but you plan on getting married someday, maybe this will help you decide, do you want to be married or not? Because it's work to be married, but it's lovely and beautiful and worth it. So that's that. And one more, men's, um, November 8th and 9th is a men's retreat. It's a weekend retreat, and it's Calvary Chapel, North Jersey. Um, and this is a great retreat. Charlie usually goes to that as well, but we have a function that weekend. So he will not be there, but we recommend that you go. It's a great retreat. And the men who go with Charlie always come back excited about what the Lord spoke to them. So please consider these things. Um, they are not, we're not in charge of them. So if you're interested, there's cards like this in the back. You can go on their website. And the other two events I mentioned, you register online. Um, <clears throat> And that's it. God bless you. And guys, don't forget the Calvary Chapel Philly cheesesteak retreat that we go to. In, uh, in Philadelphia. When is that this year? Does anybody know? Any of the guys know? When do we go? What's, what's the date, Dan? Right around Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. So I can go to that one. <laughs> I do things. All right. 
I'm so excited. Are you excited? Yeah? It's not very encouraging. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do when we take Chenda to uh, New Hampshire and, and that whole experience, you know. I'm just so excited, you know. Pray, pray about that, too. I, I was telling the guys yesterday that when we go up there, we're going to meet the, um, the senator up there, uh, the, the U.S. senator. She, you know, a little meet and greet and probably photo op for her. It's, you know, she did a good thing, you know. So, so keep that in prayer. And um, we're also going to be going to a college up there in New Hampshire somewhere. We're going to be speaking about uh, trafficking and the importance of getting involved. And, you know, coming against that and, you know, all that. So it's, it's going to be a nice little trip. So it should be a, a good time. So keep that in prayer. All right. Uh, should we read the Bible? Yes. Always. Amen. Let's turn to Luke chapter 9. And we're going to pick up at uh, verse 6. Last time we were together, we noted that it was time for the disciples to um, take a flight and go out and preach the gospel and take nothing for the journey, and, and they went, and uh, they departed. And it says there at verse 6 that they went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Love that verse. Now Herod, the Tetrarch, the ruler over, uh, you know, the uh, area of Palestine at the time, Tetrarch, crazy man. He heard of all that was done by him, that's Jesus. And he was perplexed because it was said by some that John, John the Baptist, had risen from the dead. And, and by some, they said about Jesus that, no, this is Elijah had appeared. And by others, that one of the old prophets has risen again. Herod said, yeah, but John I have beheaded. But who is this of whom... I hear such things. So he, he sought to see him, Jesus. Well, the apostles, verse 10, when they had returned, they told Jesus all that they had done. And then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him. They followed Jesus. And he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who had need of healing. When the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, send the multitude away that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions for we are in a deserted place. But he said to them, no, I got a better idea. <laughs> you give them something to eat. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish. They were able to steal it from, the, from a little kid. I'm just kidding, just joking. And unless we go and buy food for all these people, you know, we don't have enough food. For there were about 5,000 men. And then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so and made them all sit down. And then he took the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven. He blessed and broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled. And 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you.
for what it is that you did that day. Recorded by all the Gospels. Only story. Recorded by all four Gospels. And no, no doubt, Lord, this is an important story for us. To remember, to receive, and to believe. So I pray, Lord, that you would equip us all with this message. That we would see and believe, Lord, that we, we have the equipment, Lord. We have the resources to touch lives around us. For you are God. And you are mighty, Lord, and you could do great things. So I pray, Lord, pour out your spirit. Help us to hear what it is that the spirit is saying to the church today. We know you will, Lord, because we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so they depart. According to Jesus, they go into the world. They share the hope of the gospel. And it said there in verse 6 that they were preaching it, the gospel, and they were healing everywhere. Now, before we see what happened on the, when they returned to tell Jesus what happened in the sharing of the gospel, Luke says this about Herod. Now, Herod the Tetrarch, he was a little baffled because people are saying, oh, this is Elijah come back, you know, speaking of Jesus, or this is John the Baptist He's returned and, and, you know, I want you to understand that everybody has an opinion of who Jesus is. Everybody does. Who he is. And you could find a multitude of people and you'll find out different opinions of who Jesus Christ is. I mean, I pulled up a, there was a huge list of what people believe, you know, about Jesus Christ. And they're not all right, okay? <laughs> they're not all right. The, the, you know, you'll go to the Hare Krishna, you know, uh, people who believe in that movement. And they, and they say, whether you call God Christ or Krishna, ultimately you're addressing the same supreme personality or Godhead. Is that right? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. They go on to say, they, God has millions of names. And because there is no difference between God's name and himself, each one of these names has the same potency as God. I completely disagree with that. Right? Or John Lennon. Right? He said, I believe in God, but not as one thing, not as an old man in the sky. He said, I believe that what people call God is something in all of us. And he says, I believe that what Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha and all the rest said was right. It's just the translations, he says, that have gone wrong. Everybody has an opinion. The Dalai Lama, okay? Christ also lived previous lives, he said. And he said, and he spoke of, you know, Buddhism, that it taught the same religious values as I mentioned earlier. He said he's a, to be patient, tolerant, compassionate, become a better human being. A lot of people think that that's what it's all about. You know, and Jesus just taught us to... You know, just be good people, right? No, no, we need a savior. <laughs> we need a savior. We need somebody to come to earth and save us from our sins. C.S. Lewis, I think he had it right. He said either this man was and is the son of God or else he was a madman or something worse. Right? C.S. Lewis. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody thinks what they think about Jesus Christ. But I'm of the opinion that we are to let Jesus speak for himself, who he was, right? And then you make that determination, who he is. But Herod heard that this man, Jesus, was doing all these miracles, and he was perplexed because it says there that he, um, that, that he, he beheaded him, it says there, in verse 9. He said, how could this be? I beheaded John. He knows that John is gone. G, uh, Herod saw uh, the head of John the Baptist on a platter. He, he knows that John the Baptist was dead. But then he said, but who is this? Verse 9. Very important. Who is this? That's a, that's, that's a question we all, again, we have to answer. I just mentioned a couple people. They all have differences of opinion. But you yourself 
have to take time. Every single person here, every person watching online, if you need to make this decision yourself, you know, it can't be, well, mom told me to believe this and grandma told me, you know, like all these people, they told me what to believe. No, you have to come to this question and answer it for yourself. Let me tell you, many people will attempt again to answer that question, but you need to answer that question for yourself. Don't let other people answer the question for you. Everybody was coming to Herod, voicing who this Jesus might be. Herod said, no, who can this be? And I believe when you find that answer, who Jesus is personally, then you could finally be guided in this crazy world. Because Jesus has the answers. For me, Jesus Christ is, as he says in John 14, 6, Jesus said of himself, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father. No one goes to heaven except through him. Jesus said that. This isn't, this isn't like, well, this is what I believe, right? A lot of people, well, this is what I believe. I read an article in, you know, Time Magazine. And now they have the answer to life. And, and they will, it's amazing that people will base their life on a, on a Time Magazine article. It's crazy. Jesus is the way. The apostles return in verse 10. <laughs> I love this story. They returned and they told Jesus all that they had done. All that they had done. Jesus, it was amazing what we were able to do. Do you hear what I'm trying to say? <laughs> I don't mean to nitpick, but shouldn't it have been, man, Lord, <laughs> what God was doing in us and through us, right? Jesus, it was amazing. You told us to go and to share your gospel. And the amazing things that you were able to do, Jesus. Because they put their trust and their faith in you, Jesus. No, no, no. It was, look at what we've done. <laughs> look how wonderful we are. Well, Jesus, you know, tries and gets them to slow down. And that's why he took them aside privately. That's why Jesus took them to another place. Because these guys, they, they started to think, wow, it, it's all about them. So he takes them aside to a deserted place, right? And what happens next is anything but a vacation, okay? This isn't a vacation trip. This is going to end up to be ministry. And yet it's a teachable moment for the disciples and a very, very teachable moment for us. In the history of the disciples. On this lesson... We're going to find out about resources. Resources. Do you believe, do you believe that you have the resources to help people? Or it's only people that go to Bible college. Or it's only the pastor. It's only those that are gifted in ministry that have the resources to touch people's lives. Do you believe that you are sufficient because of what God gives you in the power of the Holy Spirit that you, are, you have a sufficient amount of goods to give to others again or is it just by it's just uh, the ability of special people to do the work of ministry well this is a very important question to answer and this story is so important that God placed it again in all three Gospels. In Matthew 14, you can read the story. Mark chapter 6, and later when we get to John 6. Why is it so important? Because the Lord placed it on the hearts of the four Gospel writers to get us to see. And, 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 and if there's one thing I can just, I just pray that each and every one of us who know Jesus, that we would be emboldened to believe that we have resources to give people that are hurting in this world. There are hungry people. 
hungry, starving people, right? That's the whole, that's the picture of what we're reading here. They go to a deserted place and what does it say? The multitudes knew it and they follow Jesus. They are following, they want to know the kingdom of God. They desire, they want it because all these people that I read before, they all have their ideas. And they're searching, they're going all over the place to find the answer. And we have the answer. Bronx lingo, right? The answer. We do. We do. And they follow Jesus. And notice, he received them. And again, what did he proclaim to them? He proclaimed, Jesus proclaimed the kingdom of God. Don't get off message. You ever hear politicians today? Don't get off message. Well, as Christians, we should not get off message. Okay? A lot of times we stray into areas we don't need to even go. People want to know, uh, how do I go to heaven? That's what people want to know. We have the answer. It's Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God. And notice when that message is preached by Jesus, and I want us to see it, healed. Healing came. There were people that were healed who had what? Need of healing. And that's what they preached. The gospel of Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Preach the kingdom of God. You are ministers of of reconciliation. I'm not the only minister here. We have a hundred ministers here. You know Christ? He calls you into the ministry. Right? God has given us prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers, whatever. For what? For the equipping of the saints. To do what? To do the work of ministry not only my responsibility. Oh, I love the responsibility. I have no problems with that. I know what I've been called to do. But do you believe that you have the resources to touch lives out there? That's a question you have to ask yourself. Boy, time flies, boy, when you're preaching the kingdom of God, healing people. <laughs> it must have been an amazing day. God is moving in mighty ways. And it says in verse 12 that when the day began to wear away, the day began to, the day was getting old. It was getting dark. And I like what the 12 said. I don't like it, but I like to read what they said. I'm, you know. Send them away. Check that out. Lord, <laughs> we're tired, man. <laughs> We've been at this all day. The day is wearing away. Send them away. We don't want them anymore. Send them around so they can get, you know, lodging, it says there. Or, you know... Send them away. When God wants to do a miracle, we oftentimes say, send them away. No time for this. It's late in the day. My ministry is already done. Send them away. And God wants to do a miracle. Now, this, what, we're, what we're reading here today is a miracle, okay? It's not what some silly commentators say. It, this, is a, this is a demonstration, you see, of, 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 of people that willingly share their resources. This is a story of, of people, they saw the need, and, and they reached out, and they shared their box lunch, their box lunch with people. And, and there was more than, I mean, the greatness of humanity, you see, when we decide that we're going to share what we have. That's not it at all. You got to understand, 
all four gospels say the same thing. We got nothing. That's what they said. Because Jesus said, you feed them. They said, we don't have it. We don't have it. This isn't a, this isn't a display of the amazing gift that we have as human beings to share. No, no, no. They didn't have it. All four Gospels say they didn't have it. There was no food for all these people. 5,000 men plus women plus the little munchkins. A lot of hungry people. They didn't have it. Lots of people, no food. So the disciples' solution, and it's oftentimes our solution, send them away. People come to us with needs. How often? I pray not often, but how often? Do we send people away? Send them away. It's late. Even there, there's all those people there. But Jesus said to them, no, no, no. Verse 13. You. Uh, no, Lord, there's professionals out there. <laughs> no. Jesus says this to all of us here. And, and I'm sorry if I'm going to ruffle some. You. 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 You feed them, Jesus says. You feed them. You give them something to eat. Now my question is, would Jesus ask us to do something that we would not be able to do? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. When Jesus calls us to do something, that's us, that's them, that's all of us. He will give us what we need to accomplish what he calls us to do. You give them something to eat. All the physical miracles, all the, the healings that happened in the, the life of Christ in his ministry finds a place in our lives for today. Believe that when people come to you with a need, you can meet the need. What am I saying? People come to you with a psychological need, whatever it may be. But what do we do oftentimes? We send them away. Now sometimes, yes, people need specially trained counselors, but not all the time. You give them something to eat. You give them Jesus. And watch what can happen. Don't always be so quick to say, Oh, I know who you need to speak to. You need PC. Right? That's what you do. I know you guys. I know you guys. Man, if, if this person can just meet my pastor... He will give him all the... No, 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 wait, no, 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 no. I'm the equipper, man. I equip you so that you can do the work of ministry. Yeah. Don't just be so fast to send people away. Yeah. Get the professional. Some emotional needs, somebody comes to you. Go to this therapist that I talked to. Oh, he, this person is great. Great therapist. And don't be so fast. Because God wants to blow your mind. When you start to trust him, that he will give you the resources to do something amazing for him. He wants to use you. He wants to bless you. Because he's going to use you. And work through you. It don't always send them away. Some person comes to you with a relationship problem. I am my uncle Don Juan. He just he's good. He's he's good with you know relationship things, right? Some physical issues, so on and on and on. All right. Jesus said to them, 
you feed them. And don't miss that opportunity, friend. You have the resources because Jesus Christ, if you are Christian, he is willing to use you and he is alive in you. I'm not shucking my responsibility as a pastor because I love going to people and hearing them out, but I also believe Jesus wants to use you. You might be ripe for the most finest hour of your life by talking to somebody. Winston Churchill, I love this quote. It says, to, he said, to every person there comes in his lifetime that special moment when he is figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered a chance to do a very special thing unique to him and fitted to his talents. And he says, what a tragedy if that moment finds him unprepared or unqualified for the work which would be his finest hour. Right? What does the Bible teach us? Be prepared in season and out of season. Right? To give what? To give them how brilliant you are? No, to give them for the hope that lies in you. Oftentimes, that's all people want. They want to hear, what makes you so hopeful to carry on in this life? Give them the gospel. See what God will do. There is a finest hour coming for us. Don't send them away. Share his love. Share the words of life. You got this, guys. You can do this. Right? You can do it. Right? You can do this. Share the good news. Learn to trust what God has given you, not what he hasn't given you. Oftentimes we say, we, no, they had something. They had something. Very small, but they had something. Learn to believe that you have enough, even if it seems so small. Because they said, we have no more than, right? We often do that. Who am I, right? Who am I? We have no more. Five loaves, two fish. That's all they said. And unless we go and buy food for them, there's, you know, they could do the math. They can calculate. They understood. But what we add, oftentimes, God wants to multiply. See, we, we're into addition. We, we count, right? We count heads and stuff. But God is into multiplication. That's how God works. He works in a totally different way than me and you can ever imagine. Make them sit down, says Jesus, verse 14. I want you to note the first thing that we have to do is just slow it down. Just slow it down. Yeah, but I didn't go to seminary, and I, don't, I can't speak like you can, and I don't have the verses that you have, and I don't... <gasps> slow down. Just sit down. That's, that's what the Lord says. Make them sit. Sit with people. But you don't know my troubles. I'm, I'm going crazy. I'm, I'm losing my mind. Uh, uh, my relationship. <laughs> Sit down. I want to tell you about my Prince of Peace. How often that is all people need. He has you. He loves you. He died for you. They're in some kind of a sin. They're in some, they're in some kind of bad situation. He died for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He wants you. That's what people need to hear. Sit them down. Slow them down. Relax. Trust the Lord. And give them what you do have, not what you don't have. Give them what you do have. It's a mustard seed, right? Oftentimes, it's all people need is a little mustard seed of faith. Trust God. And you drop that little seed in their heart and you watch what can happen in people's lives. But so oftentimes, we, I don't have all the resources to fix them. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. 
you're going to you're going to pray to a God who owns a cattle the cattle on a thousand hills you're praying to a God who spoke and the universe flung into existence that's a pretty big God yeah but I don't have a hundred dollars <laughs> you kidding he took what they had, verse 16. Again, I love this story. He, he took the little that they have. He'll take the little that you have. I only know one verse of the Bible. That might be the verse that they need to hear. It was only one little verse that someone spoke to me. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, Isaiah 40, 22, and my eyes went boom. <laughs> it was like, wow. I went to door and she was like, that's weird. That's all I needed to hear? A verse from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22? And that's all I needed for the, the light of God's word to go woof, right through me. Blew me away. Share what you have. Give them what you have. Not what you don't have. You know what, buddy? Come back in four years. I'm going to seminary. I'm doing this online course. Give them what you have. Give them what you have. And Jesus took what they had and what did he do? He looked up. He looked up and he blessed it. Acknowledge who has the power and it's not you. That's the most important thing. Acknowledge who has the power to help people in your lives. Where does that power come from? Look up. Oh God, help this person. Their relationship, their psychological issues, their problems, they're, they're, they're lacking in resources. They're going to get thrown out of their house, Lord, oh God. We look up. That's what we do. And he blessed that effort. And he blessed it. God blesses when we slow things down, we trust him, and, and then he breaks it, it says there. He broke it and gave it to them. It's interesting that we're having communion today. And he gave it to the disciples and they set it before the multitude and everyone ate and were filled. Everyone ate. Even the disciples. This is interesting. Jesus provided for 5,000 people and yet he himself, he did not provide for himself. Remember at the temptation, the enemy came, the tempter. He said, why don't you turn those stones into bread? You're starving over there. Man will not live on bread alone, but by every word of God. It's interesting that Jesus didn't provide for himself when he needed to. When he himself was hungry in the wilderness. At the very start of his ministry Jesus didn't provide for himself Jesus could have turned those stones into bread yet he didn't choose to do so spiritual rule when we do choose to provide for ourselves and when not to provide for ourselves when do we choose to you know fight for our rights and when we don't fight for our rights when do we defend ourselves when we should well it seems whenever it's it's for us personally we need to at least question whether it's from the Lord we have to at least question it, whether it's from the Lord. But when our provision is outward to help others, to provide outward and towards other needs, other people's needs, it's probably the right thing to do. It's probably the right thing to do. Now probably most of us here, we want to be like Jesus, don't we? I mean, that's why you come to church, right? <laughs> You want to be like Jesus. I know that's on most of your hearts. Oh God, I want to be like you. Please help me to be more like you. Well, one way is to follow the way that he cared for others. People will say, send them away. No, 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 you be like Jesus. You be like Jesus. You don't chase them away. You say, I'm going to help. 
going to take what little I have and I'm going to follow the way of Jesus. He cared for others. But in order to provide for others, Jesus shows us where to look, look up to heaven. That's where all the resources are. Looking up into heaven. Psalm 121, one of my favorite psalms. I lift my eyes up into the heavens for whence comes my help. My help comes from you, Lord, creator of heaven and earth. We look up to heaven. And the thing about this story that really blows my mind is that there was leftover. God is a God of abundance, isn't he? The way he could provide. Anybody here ever have God provide in, in a way that, man, I didn't see that coming. I mean, I, you know, we just, we just got star, right? We just got a check in the mail, star. I was like, <laughs> it's law, hallelujah, Lord. I took that check and I went, oh, Jesus, Lord, yes, we're going to be warm. Speaking of which, can we put the heat on? <laughs> Had enough money to get oil. I was like, yes, Lord, fill up the tank. Abundance. I'm turning the heat on. Dwayne said, nope. <laughs> then Lisa says, nope. I said, Lisa, talk to Dawn. Nope, nope, not talking to Dawn. Freezing. Slumlord. Got that Cambodia blood, you know. I need heat. But it's amazing how God provides, isn't it? Not? It's pretty crazy, right? Just when you least expect it, abundance comes. Just flows out. But what I like about this story is that they, they took the leftover fragments. They, they you know, I, I see a balance here. Because I think a lot of times we worry so much about the future that we hoard and keep and we don't take steps for God, right? And the other side of it is though that we, we want to be frugal. So when he does provide in great abundance, like the nation of Israel, collect double on Saturday, you know? You know? Fragments. Like be frugal. Like, don't waste it. Don't, don't, don't let it just go to the side, right? You know? I see a balance here. Pick up the fragments. You see, we could trust God for the future, and we don't need to live so timidly that we never take steps of faith. God will provide, but also don't waste the provision when he provides. And don't, don't speak fear into your kids' lives either. Don't worry about tomorrow, though. You know, balance there, right? Teach your kids to trust God with the future, but also when God provides, teach them about being frugal and not wasting, but to live that balanced life. Pick up those fragments. Don't be wasteful. What do I leave here today with? For me personally. I want to be ready to seize on the moment when God provides an opportunity for me to be used in his great work. Don't miss the opportunity. If God places it in front of you, don't look at the situation and go, it's overwhelming, send them away. <laughs> here's, here's my number to my therapist, you know, like, you know, send them away. Don't be so fast. Don't be so fast. Because oftentimes God places that person in front of you and you just might miss to seize that moment of ministry when you could be used in a mighty way. Don't let, grab it. Grab the opportunity. Sometimes even the first bull that passes you by. Remember the story I told about the guy that he loved? <laughs> He loved the farmer's daughter, right? And he wanted the farmer's daughter. And the farmer's, the, the father said, okay, go stand out in the field. I'm going to send three bulls your way. And if you could grab the, 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 the tail of one of those bulls, man, you know, you can have my wife. And the guy was like, I'm doing it. My daughter, I'm sorry. Thank you, honey. <laughs> so here's the guy out, right? Here's the guy in the field. What did I just say? What did I say? 
Oh, the, the, giving the wife away. No, 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 no. The young man didn't want the wife, the daughter, the wife of the, the no, no, no. He wanted the daughter. The daughter was a beauty. Loved her. All right, son, go stand out there in the fields, and I'm going to send three bulls your way. And the first bull that he sent, this bull was nasty. Huffing and puffing and digging into it. He was like, oh, I'm letting that one go by. I'm not going to touch that one. And he didn't touch it. Went right by him. He was like, I'll wait for the second or third one. I didn't even... Father sends out the second bull, even more nasty and ugly than the first. He was like, I'm not touching that. The third one comes out. All sickly, weird looking. <laughs> right? The father sends the bull towards him. He's like, I got this. And he goes to jump on the bull's tail. And guess what? He had no tail. I love that story. I love that story. Why? Take a shot at the first one. <laughs> Don't miss an opportunity. You, you want to be used of God? Just... Take the first, it's coming your way, take the shot, right? Don't wait until the third bull. Because the third bull might not have a tail, you see. Jump at it. Don't miss any opportunities. Secondly, be ready to meet the need. Be ready to meet the need. Jesus was always aware of needs. Meet the need. Jesus says, you feed them. You got this. All they needed to do was to look to Jesus Christ, trust him, and say, Lord, I think you're going to provide. You're going to do a miracle here, Lord. So if we're ready to seize a moment and we want to meet that need, then I believe God will thirdly provide to meet that need. God will provide. You alone, not so great. You have nothing. Just like the disciples said. God has everything. He has all power. All the resources. Right? But when the two come together, oof, God could do amazing things. I'm witnessing with my own eyes as a pastor of this little church the amazing things that we are doing for the glory of God. When we step into the kingdom, we're going to be blown away at how much we did. But we need to do together with God. Augustine, I love this quote. He says on the mission of the, the work of the church, when he says, by himself, God won't. By himself, God won't. By ourselves, we can't. But together with God, we can. I love that. So friend, God wants to use you in amazing ways. I pray that this would be an encouraging message for all of us, that God wants to use us in amazing ways. You receive that. You, you feed them. You feed them. And I expect to see miracles happening. Because God is that good. Lord, we, we thank you for this day, this message, Lord. And again, it's a vital message, Lord, because it's found in all four Gospels. And we don't want to lose that, Lord. You keep giving us this story over and over again. And I pray, Lord, that we would believe that you are that good, Lord. That you wish to use us, Lord, in ways that we could never believe. And we want to be like you, Jesus. We want to, we want to be used in your kingdom. The way you did things, Lord. You were so outward and looking, Lord. For those opportunities. People came to you Jesus. And, and you healed them. And we believe that you are the same. Yesterday, today and forever Lord. That when people come to us. We can, we can give them you. <clears throat> and to believe that you can work Lord. 
And friend, maybe you're here this morning and you never heard the gospel before. I wish to give you what, what I have to give. And his name is Jesus Christ. And friend, maybe you never heard this before, but Jesus died for you. He died for you. And he died so that your sins can be forgiven. And Jesus said, if you believe in him, you will not perish but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. The only thing that separates you from your God, as the Bible says, is your sin. And Jesus died for your sins. Maybe this is the day that you're going to confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you can leave here knowing that your last breath here will be your first breath in heaven. Mm -hmm. This can be the most glorious day ever for you. So, if you're here today or you're listening online, I encourage you, confess your sins right now. Say, Lord, I'm a sinful person. And I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me. And I receive the gift of eternal life. I welcome you as my personal Lord and Savior. And Lord, to any that may have prayed that prayer, Lord, we, we believe, Lord, because you said it. That whoever confesses you before men, you will confess them before your father. So friend, before you leave today, you can tell somebody that you came with, you can come forward and speak to me and say, yes, Charlie, I, I received the gift of eternal life today. Hmm. And what I can say is what Jesus said, that there is joy in heaven. There is literally angels flipping out in heaven. Hmm. Because you gave your heart today to him. So Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, I just pray that the, the celebration of your table would be sweet now. That we would joyfully receive your body and your blood today. Thank you for this morning, Lord. Continue to work mightily here, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the guys are going to come forward. Let's prepare our hearts for communion. Communion, that means to commune with God, right? That's what communion is.